Hello and welcome back to Mastering Data Visualization with D3.js. In today's video, the first of section 4, we're going to take a look at how to plot geospatial data, in other words, maps. In this section, we're going to see how to plot 3D surface of a sphere data onto a 2D plane, how map data can be conveyed using the GeoJSON format, and different features D3 provides for drawing on a map. In today's video, we're going to focus on map projections. In this video, we're going to see the different kinds of projections that D3Geo provides, why it's non-trivial to project 3D data onto a 2D plane, and how to load up some simple data using GeoJSON. Now you might think that what's the problem here? We're looking at a picture of the surface of the Earth, and it's on a 2D screen. No big deal. For one thing, you can only see one side of the Earth in this projection, the kind of projection you would get from a camera orbiting around the Earth. And for another, the edges here are distorted. You can see because we're looking at a sharp angle, the sizes of these things are changed. And simply, you might think, oh, well then, let's just take latitude and longitude, turn them into x and y coordinates, and there you go, you're done. The problem is there's really three things you want a map to do. You want it to preserve the shapes of objects. You don't want them twisted around. You want it to preserve the area. You don't want a small country to look big and a big country to look small. And you want it to convey distances accurately. You might want to say the line drawn between two countries, if that line is straight, it should be the shortest distance. The problem is you can't have all three of these in the same map projection. If you want a map that preserves area, you're probably also going to have a map then that distorts the shape. If you want a map that preserves shape, you're probably also going to have a map then that doesn't have exact straight lines corresponding to great circles, the shortest distance. Just to give you an example here, take a look at North America, Brazil, and Greenland here, overplotted with an equal area projection. You can tell that the area of Greenland is much smaller than Brazil, and that Brazil is almost the same size as the continental United States here. But with the map projection you're most familiar with, Mercator, Brazil appears tiny compared to Greenland, almost half as small, when in reality, Greenland is more than half as small as Brazil. So the error in area here is almost a factor of four or more. This is one of the problems in dealing with map projections, is deciding which of these bits of information is important and which ones you want to preserve. Let's take a look at a real-world example now using D3. So I've written some simple D3 code here that loads up a JSON file. This is our GeoJSON data. Then uses this plot function, which we can call from the console, to pick a certain kind of projection. It'll generate a projection object, feed that into D3's geopath, and then use that geopath object to convert latitude and longitude coordinates into screen coordinates. Finally, we use this geograticule object here to generate latitude and longitude lines every 10 degrees, and again, use the path object to translate that latitude and longitude into screen coordinates. Let's take a look at the Mercator projection, the one you're probably the most familiar with. It's the one that's used for most maps. You can see already that there's a bit of an issue here in Mercator. While things look pretty good near the equator, Antarctica appears to have the same area as the whole rest of the world combined. In other words, Mercator starts to really twist and distort things near the equator. Er, further from the equator near the poles. The same thing happens with that very simple equirectangular projection where you just take your latitude and longitude and turn them into x and y coordinates. The only problem here is now not only do we lose our equal area property, we also lose our conformal property. Stuff is twisted and distorted. Things near the poles get stretched out not just in their area, but also in their shape. Now, if we want to preserve area, we need to go to a conformal kind of projection. And one example of that is the conic conformal. 
And you can see that this is very different than the other kinds of maps we've looked at so far. It's no longer a simple Cartesian plane. You can see we've projected this onto a semicircle. This has the advantage that shapes are preserved here. Area is not quite preserved. You can see Greenland looks again quite huge. But conic conformal plots have the advantage that great circles, the shortest distances between two points, are always shown as straight lines. That's why this kind of projection is very common in aeronautic uses, where they want to actually paths that planes will take. Let's take a look now at some interesting kinds of projections that use perspective. So the simplest one is the perspective you would get from an observer looking at infinity. This is the orthographic perspective. And you can see this looks like what you would get from space, in other words. So orthographic projections are really good if you want to show one half of the globe and you want to kind of give a bird's eye view of things. There's also the stereographic projection. Here we've deprojected the whole surface of the Earth so we can see both sides. This is sort of the perspective you would get if you unfolded the Earth. And finally, we have another one, a mnemonic projection. And this one has the advantage, like the conformal conic, that great circles are preserved as straight lines. So this is actually a very old map projection. It's more than a thousand years old. And it's used for a lot of different kinds of geological activities because it preserves area. Finally, we can look at an explicitly equal area plot. This projection here is a way of showing the whole globe while preserving area. This means or this kind of projection has areas always be equal. So area of Antarctica is correct. Its relative area compared to other countries here is set correctly. But as you can see, shapes are not preserved. So this is an example of that area to conformality trade-off. This is not a conformal map. And in fact, you can see that these lines curve around. This is sort of the projection you would get if you were inside looking, or if you were outside of the globe, looking at a transparent surface of the globe. So you can see there's a lot of different options here, and it really comes down to what you need to preserve and what kind of data you need to show.